Uh, good morning, um, and thank you very much for such a warm welcome. My name is Jack Fisher, and I'm, uh, I'm here to talk about how two different social startups in NC3 and Festo 21 use food to bring people together on a local, cent on a local scale and try to enable a kind of a, a global inspiration to go towards social, uh, social action. So a little bit about, my, a little bit about myself, I've, uh, I'm a recent gro uh, graduate from the University of Copenhagen where I study global health and I, as uh, Ellen mentioned, I'm the global coordinator for Europe and Africa for NCD3 and NCD3 is the first example which I'll give today. So NCD3 is a global social movement which aims to put the topic of non-communicable diseases, otherwise referred to as NCDs or lifestyle related, lifestyle related diseases firmly on the agenda of millennials by engaging with the leaders of tomorrow. So when I refer to NCDs or these lifestyle-related diseases, I'm classically referring to these diseases, so heart disease, diabetes, mental health, lung disease, and cancers. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, why am I kind of putting all these diseases together? They're all separate diseases. They all have their own subcategories, and they're quite extensive. Well, the reason why we, we put these diseases together is because they share a number of uh, common risk factors which includes social determinants of health, such as education, employment, socioeconomic status. These also include tobacco consumption, physical inactivity, uh, alcohol consumption, and poor diet. So nutrition is really key in terms of trying to, mod as, a modify as a real key modifiable risk factor to trying to prevent the diseases we're talking about here. Now, I could give you a whole, diff a whole presentation on why this is, a, this, is, this is of particular importance to the global health community. However, in a nutshell, the reason why these diseases are of particular importance is because they contribute to the largest rates of mortality and morbidity around the world. And more concerning is the fact that there's a dramatic increase of these diseases in low and middle income countries. For example, 80% of the premature mortality, so deaths under the age of 70 years of age, occur in low and middle income countries. So this is why this is of a particular importance of a health issue in terms of a global health sense. So and on the periphery, it's quite complicated, it's quite convoluted, and it's, it's, a difficult, it's, it's very difficult to try and decipher. But this is what NCD3 does. And how we're, how we're able to do this is through, well, we have a fantastic dynamic group of young people who came together from around the world, from Melbourne to Dhaka to Cairo to uh, Copenhagen to London to Boston to Ottawa. And together, we create a range of digital content and, and events which bring young people together and try and uh, really disseminate this information in a much more clear and concise manner. So we do this in a number of ways. We have a strong social media presence where we disseminate a lot of positive stories and we create a lot of digital content. We've produced over 25 short global health films from Peru to Ghana to Mongolia, all really kind of depicting these, these health topics in a very tangible manner and fantastic film. We have uh, our global social campaigns where our last campaign reached over 50 different countries, reaching 1 million, over 1 million people. And we also have our advocacy and innovation NCD3 boot camps. But I'm not going to talk about any of them anymore. What I'm going to talk to you about is an event where we are able, last month, we were able to connect food, mental health, and millennials on a Sunday morning. So these are quite three different distinctive um, elements, especially the last one does not often happen, uh, young people getting up on a Sunday morning. And how we're able to do this is through the NCD3 long lunch concept. And what the NCD3 long, long lunch concept is, is that we bring together 30 emerging and established minds uh, to engage in one particular topic relating to NCDs over a two-course meal. So, for example, last, last month in Copenhagen, we chose to uh, focus on the topic of mental health. And when I say 30, uh, we pick 30 minds, we really handpick and create this, this audience. So we not only invite people from the world of health, but also from business, from design, from artists to singers to engineers to architects. We really try to create a real melting pot environment. And once we get everyone into, this, into, this, uh, into a room, we then, we then serve up some delicious, organic, healthy food. And while our participants are enjoying this food, we, we have an, a plenary of uh, inspiring talks, which not only raise awareness about the, about the health topics we're talking about, but they also provide tangible solutions of, of real people in, right now who are uh, creating amazing positive change uh, towards this particular global health challenge. So really providing solutions. After the first course, we also, bearing in mind this kind of melting pot environment that we have, we 
also ask our participants to reflect. We ask them to think about what skills that they can contribute to the rest of the room and also what they can get, what, what skills they can also gain from the rest of the room. So having this nice reflective exercise. And then when we enter our second course, we also have a mindful eating exercise. Now, in a, in a very simplistic term, the concept of mindfulness is being more present within the moment. And we know when it comes to food that we're constantly eating fast, we're eating on the go, we're, eating to, we're finishing our meal because we need to pick up the kids or finish that assignment. So when trying to combine mindfulness with food, it's a really interesting exercise. So we have Danielle, our fantastic regional uh, seminar, and she gives out this fantastic tutorial on getting participants to take one spoonful at a time, enjoying the taste, enjoying the texture, enjoying the flavors, also reflecting of how this, this, this food has got onto the plate. And it's really, uh, we hope that participants also incorporate this into their day-to-day -day lives and also spread um, the word of mindfulness, uh, mindful eating. So once our participants are fed and are happy, we then ship them off to a 30-minute intensive incubator session where we give them a challenge. And it's amazing, 30 minutes is not a long, not a long um, amount of time, and considering the diverse range of skills, but it's amazing. The solutions that these guys present, they present to the rest of the group, and we as NCD3, we then turn these, these uh, solutions into reality, whether it be for digital content such as infographics, posters, or films. So when, after the long lunch, we not only bring, we um, not only feel that the participants are, have gained more knowledge in terms of this particular health topic, but we also feel that we've created a local network within a particular context, in a sense that all these people who have maybe been interested in a particular topic may not necessarily have been in one room at one time. So we really feel by creating this network, we can really foster, uh, we can really foster positive collaborative change. So. That's Entity Free, and now I'm going to take you from all the way from Copenhagen all the way down to the Southern Hemisphere in terms of uh, Melbourne, and I'm going to talk about a, bit, a little bit about Festival 21. Now, Festival 21 uh, was an event which I had the pleasure of attending last year, and it was held on the 11th of December, uh, which is, was of particular importance because that was the final day of the, the climate talks in Paris. And Festival 21 is a great example where 4,000 people came together and really connected through, connected through food to really engage in the topics of our food system, our human health, and also the wider climate. So now I'm gonna pass on to uh, the co-founder of Festival 21, uh, who will give uh, a little bit more information. The reality is that we have a seriously flawed, even broken system. The world we live in today, the way we live, the way we control our economies, the way we make and eat food, the way we design cities. All of these things are making us sick. And it's time to throw out everything we accept and challenge the way we actually live. In early 2015, a group of young people came together, concerned by the lack of meaningful action addressing our biggest collective challenges and backed by leading Melburnians. They set about creating Festival 21. Exploring our indispensable connection to food, Festival 21 will table, digest and seek solutions to some of our greatest contemporary challenges. Climate change, chronic disease and a disintegration of social trust and contract. change the way we grow, process, cook and waste food and with it change our future. We have really damaged this planet 
expecting the next generation to pick up the pieces and pay the bill. The youth is the most important place to start. Get yourself some really exciting, creative thinkers that get out there and make things happen. And we buy food from local farmers and grocery makers at fair prices. And we pay our workers fair wages and we buy and sell the food that is fair to our planet. We rescue food waste, prepare meals with the food, and we serve the meals in an open and inclusive environment. So we will go ahead and dream big and have big goals, because 12 months ago, we were sitting around playing cards, trying to ignore, ignore the fact that we were in a detention center. And no, here we are. <laughs> in front of you good people. <laughs> I believe that I've got some wonder for you. I believe we're on the cusp of change. We're on the cusp of a food revolution. Youth-led, art-inspired revolution against food injustice. For every 100 people, 99 people have said you're absolutely crazy. It's impossible that that's gonna work. So you've just gotta believe in yourself. I encourage all Melbourne to go outside this Christmas and share their food with each other. It seems so simple to me. Make a change. So I hope that gives you an exact, uh, kind of real, kind of clear image of what happened in Festival 21. And I think it's important to measure these, uh, kind of reflect on these statistics. There's a huge social media outreach, and to bring, again, 4,000 people together on the height of summer in Melbourne, to engage in these, in, in, engage in topics like our, our, our food system, our health and our climate, is really, really fantastic. And it's important to mention that this whole event was created by 38 pro bono uh, young people coming together in Melbourne in a local context and making this happen. It was truly inspirational for me to go there. I'm the pasty white Scottish guy in the far right there. But in terms of for me to go there, it was amazing just to see what a group of young people can do when they come together and uh, work for the common good. And as I mentioned, 4,000 people, and again, it was this variety of really amazing kind of side events, which not only provided a kind of, uh, an alternative to the kind of... Um, ways to engage, for example, there was preserving master classes and really urban farming classes, really trying to give a real tangibility to the, to the solutions that we're talking about here. And it's also important to mention that half the day, half the day was given to young people, for them to have the platform for young people who are, again, making, doing amazing work in food, in health, and uh, relating to other social issues, to give them a platform to um, express the, the fantastic work, work they're doing and to share, to share their message was really, really fantastic. And the great thing about Festival 21 is that Festival, Festival 21 did not finish on the 11th of December. Festival tw 21 continues, and it will do, because the fantastic talks that they, that they uh, gave on that day are now widely available on the internet, and also they created a number of fantastic short global health films. And I, and I, I'm talk, I know I've mentioned uh, in my talk so far about alternative ways of engagement. And I would like to share with you a short film called Be Collective. And I think this really epitomizes what I'm talking about in terms of creating, uh, connecting the dots between our food system, our health, and our climate change, oh, sorry, climate. A single worker is a busy bee. In her short lifetime, she will visit thousands of flowers pollinating a variety of plants that we rely on for food. These fuzzy little friends of ours have had a harmonious relationship with us since the beginning of human existence. While they don't need us for their survival, we heavily depend on them. Every part of what they produce is medicine for us and they've evolved with us, so we've got a special um, connection with them. Much like us humans, bees are encountering a huge challenge in the face of invasive species, climate change and environmental degradation. In the past 60 years, bee populations have been dropping at alarming rates and continue to come under threat. What has come to be known as colony collapse disorder is due to a variety of factors, including the parasitic varroa mite, as well as monoculture farming, loss of habitat, and toxic insecticides, particularly neonicotinoids. 
Victoria this year has had a colony collapse event. In some beekeepers' apiaries to the point of 50%. In order to meet the issues that the bees and we both face, we could benefit from emulating their communal behaviour. Bees comprise a superorganism and their successful productivity and survival is due entirely to the community effort of the hive. Can humans respond to these crises currently affecting the bees by coming together, acting as a collective and creating the change that is desperately needed? The plight of bees has captured people's hearts and propelled them into action, and human ingenuity and compassion are taking place the world over with a number of innovative projects. A hugely successful Australian backyard beehive design called Flowhive, which harvests honey on tap, has smashed crowdfunding records and in an effort to raise $70,000, raised $12 million. They've inspired new beekeepers around the world. Beekeeping is an extraordinary way to get in touch with our interconnectedness with all of life, with the extraordinary matrix we're all part of. Bees are also benefiting from human-provided habitat in inner-city rooftop beehives, pollinator hives, which are purely homes, not honey harvesters, and insect hotels for our lone living native pollinators, like the blue-banded bee. It's all about increasing the biodiversity in your garden. The native bees really have a bit of a hard time in our urban environment. On a larger scale, we're seeing the world's first bee habitat highway in Oslo, Norway. Community bee-friendly gardens and educational programs, gene diversity studies, protests and petitions leading to total bans on toxic harmful pesticides, efforts to adopt wild hives rather than destroying them. And the Australian government has even recently funded a program to protect bees this surge in interest worldwide speaks to a dramatic evolution in our attitude and understanding of bees. And our collective action demonstrates the positive impact that can be made when humans understand our connection with nature and choose to protect it. short film and I hope that I've been able to show how social, the power of social startups in terms of bringing people together through food to engage in these rather expansive topics whether it be health or climate or our food system. Um, the fantastic thing about this is Festival, there's many cities around the world who want to do similar events like Festival 21 and the sustainability model of NCD3 is already evident we're, we're next month we're hosting a long lunch in, in, in Germany. But really if we can replicate these events around the world then not only can we inspire local change and subsequently a global, a global social change, but also we can create local heroes and subsequently expand as a network of global heroes. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>